All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly, and I will be your instructor for today. We're going to start with our salute. So your right hand makes a fist with the top nice and flat, your thumb crossing in the front. Left hand, uh, fingers are together, and uh, your, th your top of the hand is going to go into the palm, and your thumb is going to cover the fist eye. And typically, we bring the hands up and we push out slightly. All right, great. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of a review of what we did last week. Last week we talked a lot about the magic word last week was alignment and how much alignment helps us with our balance. So alignment meaning we are stacking the body so that um, when gravity is pushing down on us, if we're stacked well and we're supported underneath, we have a greater chance of keeping our balance. So I have my line in the center. I have my line across the hips because if I change the angle of my hips, it also changes the angle of my line. And I want to have that line up and down. When I'm on one foot, I'm trying to bring this line in line with that foot so that it's, uh, I'm supported underneath. That's going to give me the best balance. When I lift the foot, I try not to change my hips. I try to keep my hips uh, nice and level. All right. Uh, let's see. Are there any questions about alignment? No, we're all good? Good. All right. Let's talk about the bow stance. So, we talked about how the bow stance starts with your feet shoulder distance apart. You're going to be my mirror, and we're going to go into a bow stance. So you're going to shift your weight left. So bringing your center slightly over to the left. On your heel, you're going to open the hips. So you're going to keep this leg, remembering that we want to keep the knee toe alignment on the weighted foot. So if my uh, my knee toe alignment is really important because my knee works as a hinge, which means it goes up and down, and it doesn't want to twist from side to side. That's where uh, we can injure our knees. So we want to make sure that our knee and our toes are aligned, especially when we have weight on it. So when I turn my hips, when I open my hips to the corner, I'm making sure that this leg that has my weight the knee toe alignment is in place, so I'm keeping this nice and stable as I turn open my hips. And when I bend my knees, I'm making sure that both knees are going in the direction of the toes. So my, uh, your right knee is going in the direction of your right toes. Your left knee is opening in the direction of your left toes. That means you need to open a little bit. When we transfer the weight, we're going to slowly lift the heel. So we're transferring enough weight to your right foot so that you can peel up that left heel. And then you're going to place the foot straight out. We're going to roll onto that front foot, heel ball toe, by pushing off that back foot, heel ball toe. And once I'm heel ball toe, then I bend the knee. And when I bend the knee, I want to think of opening those knees to line up with the toes. You're going to feel a little bit of stretching happening there. And your hips are to the corner. Your back foot is 45 degrees. Your front foot is in the straight direction. Your hips go in the back foot direction. When you are opening your knees, when you are bending that front knee, this is what I want you to think of. So this is my homemade bow and arrow. <laughs> I want you to think of this. So there's that stretching in opposite directions. And if you notice, it doesn't just uh, stay still. Both of them are stretching open. And I want you to keep that in mind. When you shift from that back foot onto that front foot, I want you to think of that opening. And that opening brings your left knee, in, oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Ah. All right. So when we go into the bow stance with the right foot uh, angled to the corner, so I'm your mirror image. 
or you're my mirror image, whichever way you want to think of it. So your right toe is to the corner, and when you have your foot going down, it goes heel, ball of the foot, toe. There's your 50%. Now my weight's in the center. I bend that front knee, and as I bend that front knee, I'm thinking of that nice opening of the knees in line with the toes, and I want you to think of that bow stretching. When I bring my weight forward, I want to make sure that my knee never goes beyond the toes because that's another place where your knee will get stressed and where you can damage. So if you are behind the toes, you're going to feel your back heel is down. You're going to feel uh, weighted in both feet. You're going to feel rooted in both feet. Is this making sense so far? All right. So let's practice. I'm going to go to the side, and you can turn to the side if you want, or you can face me, whichever one you want. You're going to have your feet shoulder distance apart. You're going to shift your weight to your left foot. Keep your left leg where it is. Open the hips, and that's going to turn the right toe out. You're going to bend both knees and sit and lift that left heel. So enough weight has to be on that right leg so the left heel can lift. You're gonna place the heel out. You're gonna push from the back foot, heel, ball, toe. Now you're at 50%. And you're gonna squeeze that sponge by pushing off that back foot and opening those knees. So remember, 50% is in the middle. Bend the knee, going to 60%. And I want you to think, heel, ball, toe, 50%, 51, 52, 53, 54, 60, ding! You stop at 60, your back heel should still feel planted on the ground. So far so good? Hips to the corner. All right, let's practice that together. We're going to have our feet shoulder distance apart. Think of your tailbone position. You want your tailbone pointing down which means I'm not locking my knees because if I lock my knees, my tailbone goes out that way. I want to unlock my knees. I want to think really soft, lower back, and I want my tailbone to get heavy, and that's going to gently pull down on my tailbone. So the tailbone goes down. That's going to open up that lower back because as soon as you lock your legs, that's going to close that lower back. We want to relax that lower back and think of heavy tailbone, and that's going to lengthen the lower back. So from here, we're thinking of lengthening that lower back. Relaxed hips, soft lower back, sinking the tailbone downward. And once we're kind of nice and heavy in the lower bottom, we're going to lengthen up the spine. So thinking of stretching gently upwards. We're going to shift the weight to the left. Keep the left leg exactly where it is. We're going to open the hips to the corner. We're going to bend both knees and I want you to think of where your tailbone position is. Your tailbone wants to point down towards the ground. You're going to lift that left heel. Body stays angled to the corner. You're going to step out. Go heel, ball, toe, 50%. So soften that front knee. Start bending that knee, 51, 52, 53, 60, ding, stop. So here, I've thought of opening, so I'm not letting the knees drift in. I'm thinking of opening those knees so that they line up with the toes. So far, so good? Yes. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next piece of it. We're going to do a little bit of Tai Chi walking. And I want to remind you that when you have your weight on both feet, you're trying to keep your tailbone position in the center. If I had a laser pointer stuck to my tailbone, that laser pointer is pointing down, and it's between my feet, it's center of my feet. When I start to move my weight and bring it onto one foot, I'm going to be bringing this line to line up with this foot so I'm supported underneath, and that allows me 
to peel my other foot up, place the foot, push from the back foot, heel ball toe, pointing my tailbone down, opening those knees. When I shift back, when I'm in that uh, front, when I'm in the bow stance, I've got 60% and 40%. When I shift my weight back, I want to turn my hips slightly to the front. And there's a reason for this. If I turn my hips, so remember how I was saying that the tailbone wants to stay center? If I just shift my weight, now my tailbone is going along this line. I want my tailbone to stay in the center and so what I do is I turn the hips and in doing so I'm starting to bring some of the weight off of this foot. I keep this knee in line with this toe, so pointing in that direction, not allowing it to drift inward. I want knee toe alignment. My weight's on this back foot and then I'm going to open the hips and then I'm going to bring my center, line it up. Now I'm on one foot, so I want to be lined up with that foot. And then I'm going to bring the foot through. Heel ball toe, bend the knee. There's my extra 10%. I stop before my knee passes my toe and before I start to feel the back heel lifting up. You're, if you pay attention to your back foot, if it really is rooted, you will not go past your, your knee will not go past your toe. Is this making sense? All right, I know I'm really being picky about the feet, but if you're picky about your feet, that's your foundation. You want a nice, strong foundation. And the reason for this is you want to have strength in your lower body, and that allows you to completely release resistance in your upper body. You can be nice and light and uh, flexible in your upper body, but only if you have a strong foundation. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, I just want to remind you that the appropriate length of your stride depends on the strength of your thigh. So we don't want to shift and land. We want to place and shift. We don't want to, um, the appropriate length is I can put my heel out, I can bring it back in, I can put my heel out. And I don't have to lift. I don't have to yank myself up. I have complete control over that leg because that's the appropriate length for me. I'm more concerned about the width of your stance than I am about the length of your stance. The length will come with the strength of your thighs. So for now, what I'm more important, what uh, I'd like is if you can, going out to about. Uh, shoulder distance apart, but remember always remain in your body's comfort level or safety zone. All right, uh, let's see. Back up. All right. So your uh, your bow stance is the most stable stance. So when I'm in my stable stance. Remember we talked about turning the upper body and where it really comes from? That it actually comes from your lower back muscles and uh, this area, this kind of middle body, bo middle body area. When we turn the upper body, we want to keep that uh, stability of the um, bow stance so the bow stance stays where it is when we turn the upper body. So I turn just the upper body. I don't allow any changes to my lower body because I'm in my bow stance and that's as stable as it's going to get. I don't want to compromise my bow stance because I'm changing my upper body. So we're going to do a little exercise together. Feet shoulder distance apart. Relaxing that lower part of the back because when we turn, remember the, the broccoli Elastic band is really tough and it's hard to stretch. So we want to go for a softer rubber band in the lower half of the body, lower part of the back. We soften that to allow more flexibility. So we're thinking 
Soft lower back, tailbone starts to hang down, lengthen up your neck. We're going to shift. You're going to shift to your right. <laughs> no, you're going to shift to your left. You're going to shift to your left. So shift left. Keep this leg where it is, knee toe alignment. Open the hips, and the hips turn the right toe out. You're going to bend both knees. Both knees are going to go in line with the toes, and you're going to push off that left foot and peel the heel up. You're going to place the heel out. You're going to go heel, ball, toe, 50%. Start squishing. 51, 52, 53. Get to 60%. That means your back foot is still well planted. That means your hips are to the corner and your body is to the corner. When we do any turns of the upper body, lower body stays exactly where it is. I want you to think of your marker in your belly button, in your bow stance, use your marker to draw a line to one side and use your marker to draw a line to the other side. Shift back. Turn the hips so they face the front. Keep this knee in line with the toe, open. Using that marker in your belly button, open the hips. Shift your weight, turn the hips in the direction of your weighted foot. Knee toe alignment, stepping out. Straight direction, push. Heel, ball, toe, 50%. Start bending the knee. There's your extra 10%. Tailbone is down, center of the body. Now you have your nice strong bow stance. Take your marker, draw a line, and draw a line. So this is just gently training your lower back muscles. Bend the back knee slightly, turn the hips, shift the weight back, turning the hips to face the front, knee to alignment. Open the hips, open, turn the body, Bring your line over this foot, stepping straight forward. Heel, ball, toe, squish. You'll know if you've gone too far if you start losing that back root. Shift, uh, sorry, in your strong bow stance. Turning the upper body and turning the upper body. You want to make sure you're not turning with your shoulders because if I want to, I can really use those shoulders to crank myself around what I want to do is I want to start strengthening those lower back muscles and I do that by thinking of my marker and my belly button going this way, thinking nice, soft, loose, relaxed lower back and that allows me that uh, range of motion. I shift back, I turn my hips, I open, opening those knees turning the body in the direction, so pushing off that back foot, peeling it up Stepping out, heel, ball, toe, hips are to the corner, a little turn, a little turn, and let's take a break. How are we doing so far? Are we feeling our feet? Are we feeling the stability of our bow stance? Your bow stance is really a wonderful stable place that you can count on and when you have that stability it lets your upper body you can really relax the upper body we want to relax the upper body because there's this uh, idea of having your uh, weight your lower body heavy and your upper body light and part of making your upper body light is how relaxed can you be how much can you let go in the upper body and there's a reason for this when you're if you think of this as your body and this is your upper body nice and light and it can move and your base stays where it is right but if we bring our energy up and we move we're not as stable so we want to have that nice that heavy solid feeling on the bottom so that we can move any which way we want to and have that stability. One of the things that um, helps keep your 
your, uh, your weight down is relaxing the upper body. How much can you let go? A lot of us tend to carry, the, I, I would say the majority of people tend to carry a lot of tension in the upper body and we don't even realize that we're holding. I often do it when I'm at Costco and then I'm like going through Costco and my shoulders keep going farther and farther up and then by the time I leave Costco I've, I've got, I'm like I'm wearing my shoulders like earmuffs. So as I do this it brings all my energy up and I want to sink. You want to allow your, your energy to sink and that's going to come through relaxation of the upper body which you're going to achieve by having a strong foundation, having a strong lower stance. All right, let's do a little bit more of the uh, Tai Chi walking. Now last week when I was doing Tai Chi walking, I, I fell into some old habits of bringing in the foot close in. So there are different styles of Tai Chi walking. They are all valid. They all uh, um, address different things. And you can practice them in the way that you like. Uh, also, if you feel like you're going to lose your balance, you might want to bring your foot in a little bit more. In the form, we have a tendency to do more of a pass-through. We do sometimes bring the foot in. There are areas of the form where we bring the foot in, so that's useful too. And other areas where we just do a pass-through. So we'll show you what a pass-through looks like. So shift your weight left. Left knee in line with left toe, open the hips. And both knees, both knees go in line with the toes. Tailbone is in the center. You're going to push a little bit more from the left foot so you can lift your heel up. You're bringing your weight over this foot. You're going to place the heel out and heel ball to 50%. And then there's your extra 10%. And this is where we're opening the bow, right? We're We've got that little stretch, we're pressing into the ground. And then from here, you have your stable lower body, strengthening the lower back. We're going to use our marker in the belly button, turn gently and turn gently. Remembering that we're only turning 70%, right? We don't want to stress the lower back. So we have that stability. This doesn't change. I'm just turning my upper body using my marker in my belly button. Then I turn the hips to face the front. I open and then I turn my body in the direction of the weighted foot. I'm lining up and instead of bringing my foot all the way in, I can do what's called a pass through. It comes in slightly and I connect with the heel, ball, toe. Where's my tailbone? Am I locking my knees, tilting my tailbone up? Or is my laser pointer pointing towards the ground? Push from the front foot. Shift back. Hips start to turn. Open. Push from the back foot into the front foot. Coming up. Heel ball toe. 60%. Do you still feel your back foot? Shift back. Open. Pouring your weight into that front foot, so pushing, lining up, stepping through, heel ball toe, bow stance. How does that feel? So far so good? Okay, I'm already sweating. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So we feel good about the bow stance. So bow stance, how much weight in that front foot? Do we remember? So remember, we come 50%, 51, 52, 52, blah, blah, blah. so where do I stop? 60. 60%. That's right, Sharon. So 60%, which means I've got 40%, but that is just that bend of the knee, and I'm here opening my bow. I have that little bit of stretching happening, both feet fully planted on the ground. When we turn the upper body, we don't let the knees go with. We don't swing the hips. The hips stay where they are. And I line up my, my front knee lines up with my front toes. My back knee lines up with my back toes. And I'm using those muscles to open. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the upper body. So 
The, in Tai Chi, we like to have certain shapes that are helpful to us, that help us connect the body. There are a couple of things. Um, I'm going to show you this first, I think. All right. So last week's word of the day was alignment. This week's word of the day is expansion. Expansion and stretching. So our spine, uh, we want to have a nice long spine that is uh, gently stretched. Remember that we're always gently stretching. And the reason we want to have a nice long spine that will help us in uh, stability and balance is, so if I have, if this is my spine, I want to have that, remember we have a heavy bottom. With my anchored bottom, then I start to kind of lengthen up. So that does a couple of things. It creates a little bit of space between your vertebra. And it, it also gives you stability. Because if you think of your spine like this, if it's not kind of gently stretched, then any outside factor is going to make it move, right? But if I have it anchored from the bottom and I'm gently stretching it upwards, do you see how that creates stability? So that extension creates a little bit of stability in our spine. And stability is uh, really good for our balance. So we want to be thinking of that. We think of lengthening up. We also think of lengthening in this direction. So when you want to connect your tips of the fingers to your spine, so there's a connection between the two, it's kind of like when you have, um, you know, those two cans and a string in between and you make a telephone between the two. If you want to have that connection between the two, you have to have the, the string kind of taut, right? Not tight but not loose. If you try to communicate like this, it's not going to go through, but if you have it just enough, then the message can get through. Same thing with your spine and your fingertips. So when we, are, uh, when we do something called uh, hugging a tree or standing like a post, this is a very classic po uh, uh, posture to give us a sense of what it feels like to be in balance and uh, expanded. The way it works is you have your feet shoulder distance apart, you line up your knees with your toes, and you bend your knees a little bit. You're making sure your knees don't go past your toes, and you're relaxing that lower back. So thinking a really soft, soft lower back, and then imagining a uh, weight on your tailbone that's gently pulling it down and what that does is I go this is my legs locked I unlock my knees I relax my lower back and I drop my tailbone I sink my tailbone towards the ground there's a little bit of uh, bend to my knees um, not, not too deep just enough to engage the thighs knees are lined up with the toes and we go into what's called hugging a tree. And it's a nice big tree. When you're in this position, if you really want to save your shoulders, the trick is you really soften the muscles. And you think of your muscles hanging from your bones as you have your arms out. And you think of expansion. So here, what I'm wanting to do is I want to stretch my upper back slightly. My fingertips are pointing in towards each other. Check your hips again. Check your lower back. Make sure they're not tightening up. And in this position, my body's right in the center. I'm lengthening the spine. I'm stretching out my back. And you can, you can relax. I, uh, I want to show you what you're doing to your body. So, Last week we talked a little bit about the fascia. The fascia is this connective tissue that runs throughout your entire body. So if you think of this as your fascia, you want to 
gently stretch out the fascia. So this is what I want you to think of. This is your, the skin on your upper back, and I want you to gently stretch it out. So the way that we do this is we not only stretch in this direction, but we gently stretch in this direction. So then it's all nice and stretched out. We do that by rounding the back. So it's kind of like I'm stretching my back in this direction and I make it nice and big, so I'm not just, uh, it's not like one of those cat things, because if I do this, then I scrunch up my saran wrap in the front of my body. I want smooth saran wrap in the front of my body, smooth saran wrap in the back of my body, so what I do is I go out, hug something really big, and you're gonna feel your shoulder blades slightly pulling away from each other, and you also want to keep your shoulder blades down. You don't want to be in this position because you'll get tired really quickly. So the elbows have to drop, neck is nice and long. And this takes a little bit of practice, especially at the beginning, because what you start to learn is you start to learn how to let go. I want you to think less that I'm lifting my arms up and trying to hold them there, and I want you to think more that your whole body is a balloon. Here you're nice and loose. Blow up your balloon. Blow up your balloon. Blow up your balloon right out to your fingertips. And what happens is when you stretch, you basically just stretch that line that goes from your spine all the way down your arm right to your fingertips. Now there's a little bit of communication happening between the tips of your fingers and your spine. Also, when you turn your body, I want you to have another feeling. If you have your hands out in front, I want you to push with one hand, turn the body and push with one hand, and I want you to turn the body and push with the other hand. So see how when one hand goes forward, the other hand comes back a little bit when, I turn, when you turn the body? You want that connection, you want that body, whole body connection in your form as well. So, if your arms are extended out and you turn the body, it's all connected. All right, so now we're going to go back to here. We want to have that stretched feeling through the whole body. Nice big circle here. You want to make sure they talk about sinking the chest and opening the back. It's because you're trying to make your circle. If you have your chest out, then your circle is going to come in, it's going to bump out, and then come in. You want to have a nice circle the whole way around. You want your neck nice and long and your shoulders down. And that connects your upper body. So far, so good? So when we practice this, we do a few things. We stretch out our fascia. We also strength, we start to strengthen our arms, too. I want you to think balloon. Here you are at 30%. Blowing up, blowing up, blowing up, blowing up, blowing up. 50%, 60%, just a little bit more. You're just a little bit more. And then if you go too far, you're going to feel a hardness start to happen. You're going to feel a stiffness, and you want to back up from there because you still want to feel kind of spongy. If somebody were to push into you, you don't want them to feel... You don't want them to bang into you. You want them to come in and it kind of goes boing. You want to have that springiness in your form and you get that by 70%, not 100%. All right, so feet shoulder distance apart. Relaxing the lower back. Tailbone goes down. Stretching upwards. So once you're heavy in that lower bottom, then you're thinking, lengthening the spine. So we lengthen the spine. We have our big circle. We have our fingertips about a fist distance apart, so not together. Check your tailbone. Is it relaxed downwards? Is your lower back relaxed? Good. Do you feel that stretched out of the upper back? Do you feel that nice 
Smooth saran wrap in the front of the body too, or are you collapsing in? Nice and open. We're gonna bring one hand down. Still with the upper back open. One hand down. We're gonna rotate the other hand and we're gonna squeeze in. And this is closing the arm. So let's do that again. So we're in our circle, nice big circle. Back is stretched. So when you bring the arm down, I want you to still feel your back slightly stretched. So stretch back, tailbone down. Bring the one hand down, keep that back stretched, keep your shape. Rotate the other hand, keep your shape. Bring the arms in. This is, and then we're gonna go to the other side. We're gonna open the arms. Circling. Keep that open back, other side. And we're gonna open. And close. So the whole time you're doing this, you have that open back feeling. You have everything slightly expanded, slightly extended, slightly expanded arms go out, opening, and close. When you close, you want your uh, elbow about the same, uh, just above your, your palm. So you're not here and you're not here. You're kind of aiming to have that palm underneath the elbow. Your shoulders are down and soft. Your neck is nice and long. And open. And close. Watch what happens to my shoulders if I lift my elbow. My shoulders start to creep up, right? And I start to get tense in the shoulder. So I always want to make sure that elbow is down low enough that my shoulders can stay down. And one more time, open, keeping your upper body shape. So are you still stretched out in the back? And close. Good, nice. How's that feeling? Good. All right, uh, let's see. I'm just gonna make sure that I haven't forgotten anything. Length and size. Oh boy, I think we've covered everything. Are there any questions about what we've covered? No. This is, this is Karen. Um, I'm never really sure where my hips should be pointing in relationship to my legs, um, particularly in bow stance or, or even in the walking. Okay. So in the walking, I'm going to take the twist out of it. We're going to do just plain walking. And oh, what happened there? Okay, so your, when you're in a bow stance, your hips, so I turned out the, oh, wait, I turned out the foot and both knees. When I'm in my bow stance, my hips go with my back foot direction. So my back foot is aiming towards the corner and so are my hips. I'm lying, oops, I was a little bit sloppy. So this is where, you know what I was talking about, stretching. So this is where that stretch happens so that I can align my knees up with my toes. And my back leg is fairly straight. It's not locked, but it's, it's fairly straight. But my hip direction is with my back foot. This includes when I turn my upper body. My hip direction does not change because as soon as I change my hip direction, my knee comes in. So if my weight's on that front foot, I cannot turn those hips. I can turn it, I can turn the hips if I'm bringing my weight back because I'm still able to keep my back knee in line with the toe. Is this making sense? So when I go into that bow stance, so feet shoulder distance apart, relax the shoulders, dropping that tailbone. So thinking soft lower back, thinking knees unlocked, tailbone hangs down, nice heaviness in the lower body, and from there, I'm lengthening the spine. I shift left, shift slightly left, and I keep this leg where it is, knee toe alignment, and I open the rest of my hips and my body 
to the corner. That's going to bring my toes to the corner. I'm going to sit and bend both knees in line with the toes. And I'm going to shift my weight and peel my foot up. Place the heel. Heel ball toe. My hips are still are, are, are opening to the corner to match my back foot direction. I'm opening that bow. So this is where I would normally be if I don't stretch. So I'm lining up the legs. When I shift back, I shift back and I turn my hips to face more forward, but I'm still keeping that back knee toe alignment. I open the hips, back knee toe alignment, still there. Turn, bring your center over that foot so you're nice and supported and step and Heel ball toe, my hips stay with my back foot direction. I open those knees, I open. I shift back, my hips turn to the front. Opening, being aware of that back knee direction, still with my back toes. Push, lining up my line so I'm over that foot, facing the heel out. Heel ball toe, 51, 52, 52. Sting 60, both feet still planted, shift back, turn the hips, opening, turning in that direction, placing the heel out, heel ball toe. Did that answer your question in a very long-winded way? That was perfect, thank you. Good, good. Any other questions? Please remember that if you have a question, there's likely somebody else in the class who has the same question. So never be shy about asking questions. All right. Is everybody ready for a cold shower? <laughs> Those of you who are, you know, in your nice air conditioned <laughs> places, we envy you. All right. So today we talked about alignment. We talked about expansion. So we want to feel Throughout the form, this is what is so beautiful about this form. This is one of the many things that's so beautiful about this form. You are gently expanding and contracting. When you do that, there's fluids in the body that need, not like the heart where there, there's the, the, the heart pumps and then blood flows. There are other fluids in your body that rely on your movement to get them moving. And so if you want to be able to flush your body out, Move, 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 stretch, 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 always within 70%, always looking for slow uh, expansion, slow growth. And as you get stronger and as you expand, your boundaries will grow. Tai Chi is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I hope that, um, that you all uh, come to love it as much as I do. Maybe you already do. There is that possibility. All right. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, uh, so Rita tomorrow is going to practice the, um, the Tai Chi walking. And Tai Chi walking, you're going to be doing it both stands, is everywhere in the form. It is, it's your foundation. So practicing your both stands, practicing that feeling of really being aware, where are my knees, where is my heel bone, where is my hip level, am I gently stretched up? Because this helps you with your stability of your spine, which when you are trying to, especially if you're trying to get on one foot, you need that stability uh, to stay balanced. All right. Okay. So if there aren't any other questions, I think we'll close for today. So uh, Rita's practice is tomorrow at 11. And, uh, and Didi runs an amazing class on Wednesdays at noon and Saturdays at nine. And she covers a lot of, she covers, uh, some of the stuff is similar and some of the stuff is even a little bit deeper. So you definitely want to check out her class as well. And then Judy has a practice on Saturdays at 1030 and she goes through the whole form. So anytime you can get your eyeballs on the form, and start, especially for those of you who have been through this before and have done the, the form and you're now familiar with the choreography, now you can afford your focus to start uh, moving towards different pieces. Opening those knees, lengthening, 
dropping those shoulders. And really, uh, your homework is, I want, okay, see how loose and flabby my flab flab is? <laughs> see really loose skin and stuff on the bottom of my arm? I want you to get your muscles to that point. I want your muscles to be so soft, 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 and then from there, when your muscles are that soft, and then that allows that expansion and relaxation. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's close class here. Put it together. And our salute. And thanks everybody for coming. And uh, enjoy your day. Drink a lot of water. Take care of your tissues. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Kelly. Uh, you're so Kelly, I just wanted to say that I really appreciated your um, discussion about fascia, fascia. Yeah. And it really, it really kind of made a difference. I could feel like that connection you were talking about. Great. For the first, for the first time. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> I like the slinky demonstration. Yeah. Like that was awesome. Yeah. So the second part of slinky. So this is stretching up. Yep. But when we stretch up, sometimes we create a little bit of tension. So I want you to think, slinky down. Yeah, I loved it, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. Yes, thank you.